What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on the Samurai Radio Sports Network. And today we're going to be talking about, as you see from the title, we are going to be analyzing Jarvis Landry. And uh, although the team said that they do not plan on selling uh, Jarvis Landry, I thought that we could sit here and talk about for a second uh, the pros and cons of having Jarvis Landry on the team. Now, I would like to start this off by saying I apologize for the couple of days of absence. I did let you guys know uh, in the video I posted that uh, I would be absent for just a little bit. Uh, due to school uh, and yeah, I was so um, that you know that happened, but we are back now um, Weekends coming. It's a long weekend those of you guys uh, going out doing whatever make sure you guys are safe obviously uh, for those of you who don't have a Long weekend, maybe you're working on a bunch of homework something like that. Uh, I feel bad for you uh, <laughs> But we did reach 547 subscribers uh, by the time that I came back today uh, so thank you guys so much for that. And then week two of the Dolphins franchise also passed a thousand views, and week one is about to pass three thousand. So thank you guys a lot for that. Uh, but let's jump right into it. So the first thing we're going to analyze for Jarvis Landry is the pros. So the pros for Jarvis Landry, in my mind, there's a lot of them, but I've narrowed them down to five, and I have them all. Actually, no, I narrowed them down, yeah, to five, and I have them all down here, um, and. The first one is he's an okay route runner. Now, for a lot of people, that might be a con. You might think that that's not really the greatest thing in the world uh, for me to put in the pros is that he's an okay route runner. Now, the reason that I think that that falls into the pros category and rather the cons category is because he does spend quite a lot of time, at least as we see through the media, and it kind of shows in his film that he's he sits there and he makes sure that he can get his routes down. Uh, we see when he's running those big plays, uh, he is able to get some routes down. So it is nice. He's not the greatest route runner. He hasn't been known for that. Coming out of LSU, he wasn't known for that. Uh, and he hasn't been known for it being in the NFL so far. So that's why I think it falls under the pros and not the cons. Now, if he was a bad route runner, I don't even think we'd be making this video so I would have to say he's an okay route runner. I think he can become a lot better. Then again, I am not obviously a wide receiver guru, uh, but I just seeing what I see on the field out of his tape from LSU and the past three years uh, that we've seen out of him. So yeah, I think he's an okay route runner. Number two is I think he is great after the catch. Now, although we like to call Jarvis Landry a slot receiver, I think even when you put him outside, but most of the time, obviously you have him in a slot, he is very good after the catch. I think that he's probably one of the best receivers in the NFL when it comes to yards after the catch. Uh, I think he has an ability to make people miss that is absolutely insane that we haven't really seen in a while. Um, but he's definitely a guy who I think creates his opportunities and finds the perfect chance to do things. He's very tough. Uh, you can tell he's really strong the way that he's able to bounce off of defenders and just be able to use the speed he has to just go. And he'll be absolutely gone. So I do really like uh, the fact that he's great after the catch. He's definitely saved the Dolphins from a bunch of games. Uh, last year against the Rams, he kind of single-handedly got us back into a groove, uh, being able to get that one catch and then the offensive line coming and pushing him in uh, and him not falling down either and just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Uh, and he scored there against the Titans. I think it was against the Titans uh, after Philbin got fired. He had outstanding plays. I mean, Jarvis Landry is one of those guys that catches the ball and immediately is able to pinpoint where he's going to be at all times, uh, and it's pretty crazy. So when he is in open field, he's extremely dangerous. The next one is that he can high point the ball in the air. Now, this is something that I give more to Devontae Parker uh, and Kenny Stills, but I think that he does have the ability to high point in the air, and I think we saw that against the Colts uh, a while back, but... I think he does have that ability uh, where he's, if he needs to jump for a catch, he is 5'11". Uh, I think that he has the ability to be able to high point the ball in the air and make that catch, which I think is very valuable to having him even as a slot receiver. Because if you want to, if you do want to put him on the outside, then you have that ability because he's able to do all these things. So I do like that. I like that he can high point the ball in the air. Definitely, definitely think that he's good at that. Um, like I said, this ties into everything else, but he's a good slot guy. Probably one of the best slot receivers in the NFL right now, if not the best. Nothing really more to go through on that, uh, but definitely one of the biggest slot guys and one of the best slot guys in the NFL. And then the last one, which ties into the second one, 
is he is just a great playmaker. Uh, we talk about playmakers on defense and offense. One of the defensive playmakers you can say for the Dolphins is Rashad Jones. Some of the, just one guy who just makes plays. Um, and the other guy I would definitely have to say would be Jarvis Landry and that on the offensive side of the ball. I think he's just an outstanding playmaker that shows and ties into everything, talking about the pros uh, of him as a wide receiver. Now when we go into the cons. The cons, I believe there's only, yeah, there's five cons, uh, just like pros. And they're all kind of, meh, but we'll get into that. So the first one I put down is the first thing that came to mind to me was the penalties. Now, celebration penalties, I don't care. I mean, dude, you want to go and celebrate, do that. And it showed that Adam Gase didn't care either. And he said that he doesn't care because it gets the team hyped up. I only put it into the cons just because their penalties. Uh, besides that, I, I mean, I could honestly care less. But I just saw that, that it fit in the cons because nevertheless, they are penalties. Nevertheless, they don't help. Uh, but if Adam Gase is fine with it and it does hype up the offense then what's the problem? But I do think that it does fall under cons. I don't think that we can just let that fly by and not really think about that. The next one is the crackback blocks, which come into penalties, which each block is a different thing uh, because some of them are illegal and some of them aren't illegal in terms of football. And Jarvis Landry has been known to really be able to get in there and give a guy a crackback block. Uh, and sometimes he gets penalized from it. Sometimes he doesn't. But I mean, that dude can lay a block down, which kind of ties into pros as well. But I think it goes into the cons just because of how it relates to penalties. So I definitely say that. The third one is money. Um, I think that Jarvis Landry is a great slot receiver. The only difference between him and Julio and Odell is that he's not a number one. Uh, and a lot of people get really upset about when I say that and when other people people say that he is an outstanding receiver but he's not a number one wide receiver he is a slot guy he Danny Amendola wasn't a like number one receiver he was a slot guy and when you bring in Julian Edelman even Edelman he acts as a number one receiver for the Patriots but he's a slot receiver uh, and that's what the Patriots have struggled with because although they can run their offense perfectly because of Tom Brady they've never had a number one wide receiver since Randy Moss and you saw what could happen with the Patriots when they have a number one, ooh, excuse me, number one wide receiver, they go off. Uh, and so that's the difference, I think, between him and a Julio and Antonio Brown, a Odell Beckham. I think he does deserve to get paid, but he does not deserve to get paid that outside receiver, uh, number one wide receiver money because he just simply isn't. He is a slot guy. Uh, he's not like a Devontae Parker where that's that guy that you can rely on as a number one in terms of what we have in our receiver core now. And it's just the same thing with, Jakeem Grant, and I'll be talking about that in a completely other video, uh, but that's one of the things that we are going to be talking about. The other one that I think I, I'm pulling into a con is that he's trade bait, and the reason why I say that is because it's as if whether the Dolphins say it or whether national media says it, he's just always involved in trade talks, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I don't think it's necessarily a con. Uh, but I think I had to put it in there just because it makes a lot of sense to put it within the cons. It's just a little weird. It's a very iffy situation, honestly. Uh, but I do think that it falls into the cons. And then the last one is that he's in his contract year. Uh, and I think that's just a huge con for the Dolphins. Not for him, not for his game, but for the Dolphins. And you could say that my con list is a little bad. But, I mean, the first three I think definitely matter. The last two... Uh, they're, they're actual reasons to have a con, uh, being in his contract year, we're going to have to choose to pay him or to franchise tag him. Uh, and the dolphins don't really have a lot of cap room as of now. Um, but in total, I think the pros definitely outweigh the cons. Uh, I think that what he provides on the field definitely outweighs everything that we can or cannot see on the outside. Uh, I think he definitely brings an aspect to the Dolphins offense that just gets them fired up and that really makes the Dolphins become the team that they can be. Uh, I think he's the heart and soul of the offense and I think it just shows. When that guy gets going, when J.H.I. gets going, um, the offense runs smoothly, but it's mostly with Jarvis Landry. When he gets going, uh, that offense turns into a workhorse and that's good for us. That's good for the Dolphins. But 
I thought I should make this video. Uh, I want to bring you guys more dolphin content in terms of longer content uh, because I don't like making those little three, four minute videos uh, for dolphin content. It's just a little bit aggravating to me just because I feel like you guys get a lot more out of my videos and a lot more out of my explanations uh, with those longer ones. So I will be doing some longer analyzing, talking about deeper things. And there will still be those short videos, but this is going to be one of the long ones. So I do want to thank you guys a lot. I think we're just getting around, I believe, 10 minutes, 30 seconds, something along that line. Uh, but let me know how you guys think the new mic sounds. I think it sounds a lot better. But, I mean, you, with, with every mic, I'm not a mic enthusiast. I don't really know everything. But I think it sounds better. Uh, I don't know if you guys do. But, as always, make sure you guys like the video. Make sure you comment down below your thoughts on Jarvis Landry, what you think the cons or pros could be. Uh, for him state maybe your five pros and your five cons let me know if you think that the pros outweigh the cons uh from me as well and then make sure you guys subscribe and if you do subscribe or you are subscribed make sure you guys hit the notification bell so you know anytime that i'm streaming anytime that i post a video anything along any lines make sure you do that and as always also follow me on twitter uh, i want to get the twitter base up so that i can do certain things along the lines with the dolphins franchise uh as you guys might have seen uh, i did do something today i did tweet something today about the second franchise which is jaguars one so if you did not see that tweet i go suggest that you look at my twitter i will be retweeting a lot of stuff about german soccer uh, but within those you'll get other things so those do matter but as always i hope you guys did enjoy this video if you're seeing this at night make sure you have a good night if you were just waking up and seeing this maybe have a great day i will see you guys next time and as always peace